Welcome back everybody. This is now part five of the Terrestrial Escape Rocket Project. Uh, we're at the point today where we are actually ready to construct a motor. Uh, the things that you'll need are really almost everything that you've had up to this point here. Uh, you're going to need the Bates grains that you cooked. You're going to need the nozzle we made last week, the bulkhead that we made just a few days ago, a motor casing. A uh, motor casing cut just a little bit longer than the uh, size of the Bates grains that you're using. We're going to build one that's four Bates grains. You're going to need your PVC primer and your PVC cement, as well as the uh, igniter that we made. So uh, let's get right to it. This is actually a very simple step in the process, but it definitely needs to be done right. Um, what I do is I just get everything out of the way that I don't need immediately and concentrate on this just step by step. The first thing that you're going to need to do is actually remove your Bates grains from the casting tubes that we used last week. And these have been sitting around for about seven days in that airtight container. Uh, the reason I leave the Bates grains inside of the casting tubes is because it will definitively hold that 1.25 inch inside diameter. Uh, I have taken Bates grains out of the casting tubes before and tried to put them into motor casings and in many cases it works absolutely fine. Uh, during the worst of times it didn't work well at all. I ended up really forcing them down in and and uh, it was a struggle to say the very least to get that accomplished. So let's get these out. So we now have four Bates grains and these are the propellant charges that are going to send this rocket several thousand feet up into the air. So now that we have that part done, let's just move that to the side a little bit. Your motor casing. Uh, these are 1.25 inch by 2 inch uh, Bates grains. So what I've done is I've cut this at 8 and a quarter. What you want to do is you want to scuff up the front or the, the height and the, and the lower part of your motor casing. I've already done that in preparation. And you'll want to roll up your sandpaper a little bit and bevel that inside edge. Uh, that just helps it so that your Bates grains go in there uh, with relative ease as opposed to maybe meeting a jagged edge and stopping. So uh, the ideal situation is that these will fit in snugly. Uh, you don't want them to be really tight because you're going to end up forcing it and you don't want to crack a grain. So that one went in there perfect, like it was made for it. Um, second one, it's going in nicely as well. I take my coring tool at this point, just center it like I was making the fuel, and down it goes. Third one. And excess there, we'll scrape that off. And now number four is in there. And the indent that we talked about for proper ignition, as you can see, is right there. That's the lip that extends beyond the Bates grain itself. As I cut that an inch, uh, eight inches and one quarter, it just happened to turn out to be perfect. So that, that part is, is absolutely done. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is take our pre-made igniter that we made. And in this case, because the cord is so long, I'm just going to feed it up through the top. Make it a little more simple. Just to show you how I'm going to do it once I get the, get the nozzle on it. And then what I'm going to do to keep that igniter in place is I'm going to wrap some tape around there. So... Let's get our motor casing primed. How far down you go with the primer is really dictated upon how much room you have left in your bulkhead, but you want at least every potential contact point coated with primer. Very simple but very essential part of this process. This is what's going to prepare the tube so the cement actually adheres 
and holds this on. Remember, this motor is going to have an internal pressure of 900 psi. We don't want this nozzle to come flying off. It is uh, both very dangerous if that happens and presents a fire hazard if Bates grains start falling down to the ground at 1000 degrees. We don't want that. Go ahead and prepare your nozzle. This is, by the way, how our nozzle turned out. Very nice convergent there. Uh, divergent with a bell as well. And this is right at the uh, 5 16 inch diameter. In the next video, I'm going to show you the static test of some of these motors that I've built here. And we'll go over a Bates grain calculator because that is, uh, again, very, very important. The washer that you use for the nozzle diameter should really be based upon how much pressure and how much power you've designed this motor to be. And a Bates grain calculator is, is invaluable. I would not want to be without it. Without it, it's, it's guesswork. So we've got our bulkhead prepared, we have our nozzle prepared, and our motor casing. Put your primer on the side, get out your cement. Uh, the thing that I would stress probably the most with the cement is uh, use enough of it to do the job, but don't use so much of it that it's soupy around the edges. Uh, that'll get you nowhere. You'll find that your PVC coupler, unless you want to stand on it for a minute, is going to, is going to slip if you have too much of this cement on. I've learned that the hard way. Uh, only thing you really want to make sure that you do is when you're putting the nozzle on, you want to make sure the flat end, not the indented end of your Bates grain, is on the bottom. This is where the motor starts to take shape and there, there is definitely an up and a down. So we have our nozzle now attached, give that about a quarter twist and hold it. Shouldn't take any more 15 20 seconds, it should be more than enough. And you'll know because if you try to twist it, it will it will grasp and it will hold. There, that is plenty of time. So back to our pre-made igniter, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fade this right up through the nozzle. And that's just me taking the lazy way because the contact ends are 20 feet. This is a, uh, this is a professional igniter that was, was given to me by a friend at work. Now what we want to do is because this sipping straw igniter is not 3 8 inch, there's a little bit of play there, what we want to do is we want to snug that into our, our Bates grain. And, and this, um, this I think is just best done with some duct tape, which I already have prepared here. And then what I do is I just wrap it around. That's going to make the top of your straw progressively wider the more tape that you put onto it. And it doesn't affect, it doesn't clog the nozzle. I, I've never had a Kato doing this. You don't have to worry about having too much material in there. Uh, and just put a strip on and, and check it. If it becomes snug, then great. If not, then put a little more. This one is not going to require much more. It's better to have to peel some away than it is to have your igniter drop down into the motor. Yeah, see, that's that's almost there. Just another wrap or two and we're going to be done. This duct tape will, will burn away without a trace. This igniter burns just like the, the bait screen, as far as I know, at 1,000 degrees, so it's it will be gone. There we 
go. So as you can see, we now have a nice snug fit into there. And the last step to actually get this motor constructed, minus the delay grain, which we're going to do in a different video, is put the glue and the bulkhead on. This is a uh, part that I really pay a lot of attention to because you don't want your bulkhead creeping outwards. What, what, what it does if you put too much of this PVC cement on is it creates a, a slippery surface that isn't going to bond quickly and your motor casing will, will get longer because of it. And we don't want that because we don't want exposed edges. We want the edge of this motor casing butting right into this concrete that we poured into here as the bulkhead. So we'll do that. Again, give it a twist, and you want to be on this. You don't, you don't want to let that creep. So I'm going to hold it. And then tomorrow or the next day's video, what I'll do is I'll show you how to make flexi fuel for the actual delay grain, and we're going to end up loading it down through the top. That will ensure that the PVC uh, pipe is, or the delay grain pipe is actually filled. And it's also making contact with that Bates grain. That's how we're going to get our ignition. And there you have it, folks. That is your nearly completed motor at this point. You've got your delay grain bulkhead. You've got four Bates grain inside. You've got an insulated bulkhead. You've got a nozzle with a 5 16 inch. And your igniter is fed up through. What I do at this point is I just gather up all the excess wire. And... I tape it right to the motor casing. Now I have where the where the rocket candy is what's called hydroscopic. It will absorb any potential moisture around it. What I do is I just wad up some tissue paper and close that up to act as a vapor barrier. You'll definitely want to get that out there before you launch. And where we have an exposed bulkhead here, we'll do the same for this. So there it is right there. It's all safe and ready to be stored. Uh, I really ideally like to, to make my motors, complete them, and then launch very shortly after that. This PVC... Uh, bulkhead and nozzle is good to go within 10 to 15 minutes at the very most. So uh, the ideal is that you be safe, keep this out of the reach of, of children, uh, away from any potential ignition source, and you'll, uh, you'll, you'll be good to go. Just keep it in a safe place, high and tight out of the way. All right, folks, so the next video will um, have to do with uh, static tests, which I'm hoping to get done tomorrow. It won't be this motor because this is actually going to be our, our launch motor. So enjoy. Uh, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Again, I hope you enjoy the video.